All right, this is a tutorial on how to take notes. Uh, first of all, we want to keep your notes organized, and we want to do this before class. The primary reason for doing this before class is that we're not going to cover this material in class. Teach, your teachers in high school, your previous professors might have done this. We are not going to do this here. We, we expect you to do the reading. We expect you to do it before coming to class, and we expect that this is the primary way in which you're going to learn this material. In this class, you are the one responsible for learning the ideas through reading. We will reinforce and practice those ideas in class and in our experiments, but you must read the material and come into class prepared. To keep our notes organized, we're going to put our name because we're going to be turning these in. On the upper right hand corner, I'm going to put the unit number so that I keep track of what material this is. And I'm going to put page one because this is my first page. I've got my uh, quad grid three hole punch loose leaf paper that I'll end up putting in my three ring binder to keep organized. I will write down the section number, section 1, 1 at the top of each page and put it, well, when I reach new sections. And then I'm going to go through and read the material in the book, read the paragraphs and come up with, look through the key ideas. When I reach a bold faced word, this is an important concept and I make sure, I want to make sure that I write this down and define it in my own words, motion. In this case, motion is the change of the object's position with time. All right, so I've got the key idea written down. So anytime I have a question, I will put a cue and make a note so that I can go back and make sure that I get my questions answered at the end. And then I'm going to continue reading. You see, my notes don't necessarily have to be sentences. The notes can be pictures and diagrams and, and arrows um, that put things together in a way that I understand them. So that when I go to think through what I'm doing here, I've got a picture for me. And these notes are for you primarily. So draw them out and sketch them out in a way that makes sense to you. Uh, there's a note. So anytime I reach the, the note with the red arrows, these are key misconceptions that people have or key pieces that people often miss. And so I'm going to put a big triangle and a note. All right, the next page. All right, now there's some examples of motion diagrams. Go through, read those, understand them. And then the stop to think. And I'll write down STT, stop to think 1.1. And I, so the question is, which car is moving faster, A or B? And then I will go to the end of the chapter, and the end, each end of chapter has the very last page of the problems, the answers to the stop to think questions. And I see that the image of B are further apart, so it does indeed travel faster. So I will put a check mark that I got that right. If I didn't get it right, I'm going to go back and read it until I understand it. And because I've reached now the end of the section, I'm going to do the summary. And what I want for the summary is five things that you learned from reading this material that you haven't already covered. And this might need a bit of a stretch to go back and think through what you've done. This is what it means to be an active reader and an active learner. You need to think about what you've done and think about how things get put together. And then the summary is the place where you synthesize these, these ideas and put them together in a way that makes sense to you. If you don't do this, then you've just been looking at the pages and you haven't been reading. I reached a new type of note in the textbook here, something called a tactics box. And these tactics boxes are sets of instructions on how to do new skills. So what I want to do is make sure that my tactics box gets described in my notes along with any instructions I need to myself on how to repeat doing these new things. And I'm going to make sure that I've got all the steps on how to do this. And then I'm going to continue with my reading. I've reached another new object, another new type of thing in the textbook. And these are example problems. They're, they've got the green box around them. And the idea of the example problem is to demonstrate how to use these ideas. So I'm going to read through the example problem and I'm going to try and work through it to make sure that I understand what I'm doing. All right, I've reached a new type of box in the textbook. And that is a problem solving strategies. So problem solving strategies are really helpful um, layouts on how to work through problems. And these are super important because these problem solving strategies will be the core to how we deal with most of dealing with new models and new ideas and working through exercises and working through problems. These things are really great and I really need to know these. 
So I want to go over the general problem solving strategy that we're going to be using again and again this over the course of the next couple of semesters and in, and in many ways through the entire uh, physics and science career. And Knight covers this on page uh, 22 at the end of chapter 1.7. The general problem solving strategy consists of basically four different phases. The first phase is to model. And that is means that we are going to simplify the situation to figure out what the essential features are and focus only on those essential features. The second step is to create a visualization. This could be a pictorial representation, a graphical representation, any number of different ways of a sketch, uh, a picture. These are ways in which we can think about what's happening. Physics is by in the most part a very visual, especially at the introductory level, a very visual uh, science. We can think about how things are moving. We can visualize them with cameras. Uh, so we're going to create representations. We're going to create pictures to help us see what happens. This is not a required step in the sense that uh, we go back and do this at the end. A physicist visualizes a problem before doing anything else. This is the first, the, well, it's the second thing we'll do. The first thing, creating the simplifying assumptions. But uh, the second thing we'll do is create a picture and sketch a picture. The third step after we've sketched the picture and gotten a handle on what's happening is then to create some kind of mathematical representation. And in this case, we're going to then use that mathematical representation to solve for some kind of formula that describes mathematically the motion or the dynamics or the physics of the problem. And then the last piece of the problem solving strategy is to assess. And we'll practice doing this as the course of the semester goes on. But what this means is to check our answer. And we've got a couple of different ways in which we can check our answer. The first one is, does it make sense? The second one, does it have proper units? Is it reasonable? These are all things that we'll practice doing over the course of the semester. If we measure the weight or model the weight of an elephant and we get one gram, that is not reasonable. That, is, that means we did something wrong in our calculation somewhere and we'll go back and fix it. So those are the key pieces to our general problem-solving strategy.